Welcome to After School Snack Time. We are so glad you're here. Welcome, friends. We are so very glad that you are here today. Welcome, welcome, welcome to story time. Hello, friends. It is so good to see you again. All right, question time. How many of you have joined us for snack time before? How many of you are joining us for the first time? Oh, well, whether you have joined us before or this is your first time, we are so glad that you're here today. I am Ms. Parker, the Financial Education and Community Outreach Ambassador, and we also have Ms. Rusalina, our Savings Kangaroo. I have the privilege of going into the community, cultivating relationships and teaching. And Miss Rusalina is along for the fun with me. And she picks out our books each week, comes up with the ideas of what we're going to talk about. And we are so glad that you're here. Now, I believe some folks had school today, right? And I believe after doing school and playing all day, we're usually hungry, right? Who would like to have a snack? Did you bring one with you to snack time? If not, that's okay. We're gonna give you this ingredients, tell you what you need to do to make a really great snack that you can make for another time. So come on, let's get a snack. Today, we're going to have orange boats. Now, normally, if you've joined us for snack time before, I walk you through the steps here on how to make this particular snack. But today, it was kind of hard to put it into words, I thought it might be best just to talk you through it and show you a little bit of what we do. All right. So today we're having orange boats. Can you see my little boat? So this was something really fun that my daughters loved making with me. So what we needed was a whole clementine. So I'm gonna show you a little piece of it. So what we did is we took a clementine and we had it whole, all right? This is really great for math. We had a whole clementine and we cut it in half, all right? So after you cut your clementine in half, you then have to use, I found using a spoon was easier. We used a spoon to scoop all of the orange pieces out. And then we had all of these orange pieces on the side that we get to eat now. Then came the best part. We've got our orange peels all ready. They're just these little halves with no oranges in the middle and they kind of look like little bowls. All right, so we have these orange bowls sitting there and then we made jello. Well, we boiled the water, put the jello in and we mixed it up. And after that part was all done, we had to take a spoon and scoop the jello into our little orange bowls. Okay, then came the hardest part of this entire snack. We had to take our orange bowls and our completed bowl of extra jello because we had more jello than we needed for our boats. And we had to put them in the fridge and we had to wait and we had to wait and wait and wait. So jello, you need to let it sit for a few hours to let it really get firm. And then our boats we're all ready. So then we had our oranges. Give me one minute. I'm gonna take my sails off. And we had an entire, we had an orange half, okay? So then we've got this whole little orange bowl and we cut it in half. And then we had this one itty bitty little boat. And then we took some paper cut out some squares and some triangles and stuck them on a toothpick. And then we could stick our sails into our boat. And then we had this cute little orange boat. And I will confess, I am not the one who made any of these sails. 
my oldest daughter is six and she made these sails. She was able to cut them out and even stick them onto the sails, onto the toothpicks, and then we were able to put them in. As an adult, it's usually better to have an adult scoop the oranges out of the middle of the clementines um, and to pour the jello, but you can definitely help too. But you have to be careful because the jello is hot. Now, you make a yummy new snack and it's time to try it. Who's ready? Mmm, that is pretty good. And what I do notice is this is blue jello. You can make this with any color jello that you like, but it kind of tastes like oranges from sitting inside the orange peel. And you also have a yummy orange that you can eat too. Mmm. And there's also some extra jello. I will warn you, with some of the jellos, they do stain fingers. So I do recommend always using a spoon. Somebody got really excited in my house about the jello and ate it with their fingers. And now they have blue fingers. So I recommend using a spoon when you have your jello. Live with heathens. All right, now that we've had snack, who wants to read a story today? Well, oh, Miss Rusalina has picked out another great story this week. Today, we are reading Iggy Peck, Architect. Have you read this book before? This was a new one for me, and I must say, I'm really excited about it. Iggy Peck, Architect. The author, the person who wrote the words of this book is Andrea Beattie, and the illustrator, the person who drew the pictures, is David Roberts. Young Iggy Peck is an architect. He has been since he was two, when he built a great tower in only an hour with nothing but diapers and glue. Good gracious Ignatius, his mother exclaimed. That's the coolest thing. I've ever seen. But her smile faded fast as a light wind blew past. And she realized those diapers were not clean. Ignatius, my son, what on earth have you done? That's disgusting and nasty. It stinks. But Iggy was gone. He was out on the lawn using dirt clods to build a great sphinx. When Iggy was three, his parents could see his unusual passion would stay. He built churches and chapels from peaches and apples and temples from modeling clay. At dinner one night, to his father's delight, Iggy got a bright gleam in his eye and out on the porch built the St. Louis Arch from pancakes and coconut pie. Dear Ig had made it until second grade when his teacher was Miss Lila Greer. On the very first day, she had this to say, we do not talk of buildings in here. Gothic or Romanesque, I couldn't care less about buildings ancient or new. She said in her lecture about architecture that it had no place in grade two. That might seem severe, but she was sincere. For when she was no more than seven, she had a great fright at a dizzying height in a building so tall it scraped heaven. On an architect's tour on the 95th floor, young Lila got lost from the group. She was found two days later stuck in an elevator eating cheese with a French circus troupe. 
After that day, it was quite safe to say she thought all building lovers were nuts. As a teacher, she taught that, above all, one ought to avoid them. No ifs, ands, or buts. As you might guess, it would cause Iggy stress to hear such terrible talk. But he didn't hear. He sat in the rear while building a castle of chalk. You, Iggy Peck, your desk is a wreck. Tear down that castle right now. You will not build in here. Is that perfectly clear? Do you, see, do you need to see Principal Howe? Uh-oh. No, ma'am, Iggy said as he lowered his head and his heart sank down to the floor. With no chance to build, his interest was killed. Now second grade was a bore. After 12 long days that passed in a haze of reading, writing, and arithmetic, Miss Greer took the class to Blue River Pass for a hike and an old fashioned picnic. They crossed an old trestle to a small island nestled in the heart of a burbling stream. But they no sooner passed than the footbridge collapsed and Miss Lila Greer started to scream. We're trapped here, oh my, Alaska's kids, goodbye. Her eyes rolled back in her head. She dropped to the ground with a vague groaning sound. Luckily, fainted, not dead. The class was amazed. They stood there quite dazed, uncertain what they should do. But one bright young man was off hatching a plan, which started with Miss Lila's shoe. Soon each lad and lass there at Blue River Plass, Pass was working together as one. And when she came to, Miss Lila Greer knew that something quite brave had been done. She looked in the air and saw hanging there a structure with cables and braces and on the far side Beaming with pride were 17 smiling young faces. Boots, tree roots, and strings, fruit roll-ups, and things, some of which one should not mention, were stretched ridge to ridge in a glorious bridge dangling from shoestring suspension. It all became clear to Miss Lila Greer as she crossed the bridge over the stream. There are worse things to do when you're in grade two than to spend your time building a dream. Now every week at Blue River Creek, elementary and second grade, all the school kids can hear along with Miss Greer, how the world's greatest buildings were made. The weekly guest speaker in t-shirt and sneakers talks of buildings from Rome to Quebec. Of course, he's the guy who builds towers from pie, that brilliant young man, Iggy Peck. What did you think? Did you like this story? Oh, I really liked this story. How many of you like to build things? How many of you like to make things? I think some of us have different things that we have an interest in. For some of us, we might like building things like Iggy Peck. And some of us might like to create things. Maybe we like to do art projects and learn things and read things. We all have different interests. 
but I think Iggy Peck's interest in architecture is pretty neat. Do any of you know any architects? Not everybody does. I feel really fortunate. I have two friends, actually, I take that back, three friends who are architects. And a couple of them, they help design buildings, usually businesses, sometimes really large apartment buildings, but usually the large buildings you see around town. That's what they help to design. But I have another friend that she can do that sort of thing, but her specialty is to help build hospitals. All kinds of different buildings need architects to design them and figure out what those spaces should look like. They're important people to have in our community. And I even know a young person who's going to school to do just like my third friend who helps design hospitals and medical buildings. That's what she wants to do. These are special people that I think that have special brains that are able to figure out how to build things and they're important people to, for us to have. But architecture might not be something all of us want to do. And that's okay. Iggy Peck's teacher, Miss Lila Greer, was not a fan of architecture because of a terrible thing that happened when she was young. But she learned that architects are important because they help build the things we need, like a bridge to get from one side to the other. We don't always have boats to get us where we need to go, do we? Bridges are really important. So having architects who know and engineers who know how to design those are really, really important. So I would love to hear if you like to build things and make things. And if you do, share them with us. You can send us a message. You can comment below the types of things you build. Maybe you've sent us a picture or feel free to email it to us at the credit union. We'd love to hear the types of things you like to do. Well, we have had another great story, another great snack time, and it's almost time to go. If this is your first time joining us, we are so very glad you're here. And if you've joined us before, we are so glad you came back. You may notice on our bookshelf here that there is a variety of books. Some we have read before and some we have not yet read yet. So maybe it will give you a clue about what we'll read soon. You can join us again right here on Facebook Live every Wednesday afternoon where you can catch us for after school snack time. We are so glad that you joined us today and we cannot wait to see you next week. We hope you have a fantastic afternoon, that you enjoyed today's story, and that maybe you'll make the snack we made today too. Have a great day, friends. Bye.